this is probably going to be the most unique review that I've ever done. Uh, precisely because I don't know how to review this particular camera because it is so modular. Yeah, technically it is the 907X CFV 50C. CFV CFV 250C. 907X CFV 250C. That's what we're reviewing. But the thing about it, this is the camera. Yeah, that's the 907X. That's it. Kind of strange, right? Literally just a lens mount, a little selector switch, a, uh, another release that we'll talk about here in a minute, a lens release, and of course the shutter button, standard 3 8 inch tripod mount at the bottom, and that's it. That's the 907X. It uses the XCD lenses, but the real bread and butter of the system is the CFV 250C digital back. That's a 50 megapixel digital back. More or less a digitization of a Hasselblad 120 or 220 film back that goes on the old V system cameras like the 500C, the 500CM, etc. But there's some history to this, and I'm going to talk about that real quick right now. This is more or less a modernization of the SWC Hasselblads that stands for Supreme Wide Angle Cameras or super wide angle cameras. They were, I think, five models. That's what they made started in the 50s of fixed lens Hasselblads. They had no viewfinder other than an optical viewfinder you can put up on a cold shoe. They didn't have the waist level viewfinder, they didn't have anything to put an actual prism on, no focus and screen, anything like that. But they were extremely qualitative lenses. They were super sharp, virtually no distortion, and people love them for very specific purposes. And that's exactly what the 907X is, it's the camera for very, very specific purposes, at least in my opinion. So yeah, going back to me not knowing exactly how to review this, it's because I don't know if we're talking about the lens, if we're talking about the back, if we're talking about the actual um, 907X system itself. So I'm just gonna take the whole thing as a whole. And I'm gonna put everything back together and then we're gonna actually talk about the camera and the image quality because it is just a beautiful camera system. But first, the actual specs individually, at least in the system, uh, the setup that I have here, the CFV250C digital back. Again, it's a 50 megapixel digital back. The sensor itself is a CMOS 43.8 by 32.9 millimeter. That is the same sensor that is in the X1D 1 and 2 cameras that I've uh, reviewed. You can check out those videos here on the channel. One of the reasons that I like this actually a little bit better than that, at least from a practical standpoint, is because, and another reason why I'm sitting here without a cover over it, is because the sensor itself is not exposed. There's some type of glass over the sensor. While it's not exactly cool to have this up willy-nilly, I feel a lot better about uh, having this out exposed than I would, let's say, just a regular sensor that doesn't have any cover over it. The digital back itself, the weight of that, I've uh, just weighed everything on my scale here, 657 grams or one pound seven ounces. The lens, and this lens is a 45 millimeter F4, they call it the 45P, I call it the 45 Snubby because it is so small. I almost went with that 80 millimeter F19, I believe it was, that I tested on the X1D. Uh, two love that lens my god, but it was huge. It was a tank So I wanted the smallest package on this camera that I could get but as it turns out all the other reviews I've read and watched they all use the uh, 45 millimeter too. So I wish I would have done something a little bit more unique, but all that being said It made it extremely small and extremely manageable. So this lens uh, again 45 millimeter f4 with the cap 300 and 45 grams on my scale, that's 12 ounces, very, very small and light. And then the ridiculous numbers on the uh, 907X camera itself. I left the strap on it, guys. I mean, if you're gonna gripe about that, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, the back itself without the cap on there, 
is 213 grams or eight ounces, incredibly small. You put everything together and this is what you have. This is the 907X CFV 2 50C digital camera system. Like I said, it looks eerily similar to the SWC Hasselblads. And like I said, I think that's exactly what it was going for here. It has the same limitations, but not. Uh, with the SWC, you literally had no way to focus other than the distance scale on the lens or your, in your optical viewfinder, which that was really just used to compose. But here with this uh, 907X, you have a flip out little digital screen that's on the back itself. You can go from 90 degrees to 45, or you can just do a flat front like that. Very, very, very reminiscent of a waist level viewfinder experience. I love that about it. Some people talk about the, the I guess the limited, uh, limited articulability um, or articulation of the screen itself. It didn't really bother them that much. I don't think anything, of course, it's not as versatile as let's say a Sony a7R or something like that, or a Sony tilt screen. But I didn't have a problem with it. I really liked it and not being able to actually set the focusing uh, based on the lens uh, with a focusing scale is actually literally something that you have to have. This is more or less a bare bones configuration of the 907X. There is an optical viewfinder just like on the SWCs that goes on top. You can get that for extra. And something, uh, we're gonna talk about this in a little bit uh, later when we talk about the actual finickiness of the camera. There is a grip that you can get that attaches to the camera and that lets you change the buttons up and have actual dedicated shutter and aperture ISO, you can, I think you do 30 different functions on the grip, but I think that's cost like $750. So yeah, uh, you can get a grip on this, but I didn't. This little guy right here, all put together, weighs a little bit over a kilogram. Uh, I think it's about 2.2 uh, pounds or so, somewhere around in there, 2.24 pounds. Extremely small. Technically, the 907X, this is the front part with the lens bayonet, uh, lens mount is the smallest medium format camera I think that's ever been made, but don't quote me on that. I'm going to read you off some stone cold facts, some specs about the camera real quick, just so you know. The LCD screen is 3.2 inches. The resolution of the screen is 1024 by 768 pixels. The refresh rate of the screen is 60 frames per second. The shutter speeds range from anywhere from, I think, one hour, eight minutes. So in electronic shutter mode, you can go from an hour, eight minutes exposure to 10 thousandths of a second exposure in camera. I don't think there's really even a need to have a bulb or a time mode with this, but you know, it's there if you need it. If you're not in electronic shutter mode, the ISO goes from 100 to 25,600. If you are in electronic shutter mode, the ISO is gonna be limited to 100 to 3200. I'm not gonna to go too much into the menu functionality of this. If you watch my X1D and X1D2 reviews, it's the exact same menu with the exact same functions. It's a touch screen. I actually like this touch screen uh, from Hasselblad more so than other touch screen cameras. It's very responsive. I just love it. Now that brings me to a point about the 907X that is probably going to be either something that you love or something that you hate. Call it a deal breaker in certain respects. This camera is very much a strap camera. At least that's what I've come to refer to it as. You literally cannot, uh, well, at least in any practical sense, operate this camera with one hand. Sometimes it takes two hands, sometimes it takes four hands. What I'm getting at here, you really need a strap or something to support the camera itself while you're working the controls. The reason for this is if you don't have the grip that we talked about earlier, the only actual external function on the camera, aside from the buttons here, is your shutter release, a little selector wheel around the shutter, the lens release, and the release for the memory card and battery. Yeah, that's it. So it gets kind of finicky when you have to uh, change, especially your shutter speed. Now you can assign this to a uh, different function. This is set to aperture on this model. You can set it to ISO or you set it to shutter speed. But I have to change the shutter speed going into the menu on the camera. I can't actually touch the shutter speed on the back of the LCD and change it that way. Like I can the ISO with the aperture. So that's a, 
I don't know, maybe a little sticking point for you. Now, speaking of the little door here, two SD slots, dual SD slots. It has the same battery as the X1D series. And that's it there. I do like how they've integrated with this, uh, the battery, the original digitized back, the original CFV back, it had an external battery thing. It was kind of clunky. So this keeps all the little beautiful Hasselblad lines intact. The bottom of the camera, this is all weather sealed by the way. You have a headphone and mic jack and you have a flash sync in and out. Now this uses proprietary Hasselblad flash sync cable. So you have to get it from them and you have an e ELX cable. I'm sure that stands for external something. I don't know what ELX stands for. Let me look it up. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, down in the comments, if you know what ELX connectivity stands for, yeah, let me know. I'd be curious. The um, camera does do video. I think it goes 2.7K and then just standard HD. I did not test the video on this camera. If you're using the 907X for video, this review is probably not gonna make a difference to you either way. So yeah, I didn't test that at all. Autofocus, contrast detection, 117 focus points. You have focus modes, continuous servo, that's tracking mode more or less, and single AF servo. The camera has Wi-Fi connectivity. You can actually control it with your uh, mobile device, but it has to be an iPhone. As far as I know, the Focus software is not supported by Android just yet. What else, what else, what else, guys, before we get into the good stuff here? Oh yeah, going back to the battery uh, for just a second, the battery life on this thing is outstanding. I was sent two batteries. I did the entire review on those two batteries without recharging. They came to me fully charged. So yeah, I don't think you're gonna have any trouble at all with the battery life on this. I would probably ballpark the amount of images that I've taken total with this camera, probably over 300. So I got a pretty good bit of uh, mileage out of the battery. I had a little recharging hub, which was kind of nice. Uh, I actually recharged one of my battery packs while I was out camping, but like I said, I ended up not even using the rechargeable battery. So yeah, battery life is really good. Okay, let's talk about the actual use of the camera. The most unique experience that I think I have ever experienced. The reason for that is, like I said, there is so few controls on the outside of the camera itself. You're relying on the LCD screen at all times. There is no viewfinder unless you get the external viewfinder. But once you get, I guess, acclimated to using this camera, it was extremely easy to use. Now keep in mind, I was using it more or less as a waist level viewfinder. If you feel more comfortable using the optical viewfinder that you can get optionally for this. Uh, it may be a different experience for you. I would actually prefer this without the grip because it is, I mean, look how tiny that is. I mean, it's super, super small. It's incredibly compact. You forget sometimes this is a medium format mirrorless digital camera with 50 megapixels of resolution. That's crazy to me. I don't think you can beat the compactness of this system, uh, at least for carrying it around like I did. Uh, something I will add about the uh, camera, at least in uh, function, or at least in everyday shooting, the balance was extremely wonky. At least with this lens, the camera itself kept flipping up or down. Uh, every time I would turn it, it would flip up. So that was very strange. Um, but like I said, I think with a heavier nose lens, that wouldn't be a problem at all. Now let's take a look at some raw images. All these were shot again in raw. They have not been processed or anything like that. But I think I'm gonna show you some of the processed versions too after each one, just so you know what it's capable of. And as we go through the images here, the dynamic range of the camera is about 14 stops. So you have a massive amount of dynamic range for recovering the highlights and recovering the shadows. Sharpness of the lens itself, beautiful. There was some softening at the corners at the low and high end of the aperture range, but that's to be expected with virtually anything. There are sharper lenses out there, at least in my opinion. I think that 80 millimeter F1.9 was um, actually much sharper than this 45 millimeter. But uh, of course, that may just be my perception of it.
So those were the image samples here. I did something last minute with a 907X and that was put it up against my Sony A7R Mark III with a Helios 44-2, the estimable Helios Soviet lens that uh, is so popular these days. I did RAW and JPEGs. Um, the Sony A7R, I think it's 40, 2.4 megapixels and then the 907X, the CFV uh, 2 back is 50 megapixels. So not a lot of difference in resolution uh, per se for all practical purposes, but you have that geometric difference between the full frame digital and the medium format digital sensors. Uh, I think you're gonna find these results kind of interesting and I'll let you judge them for yourself. This is our Sony A7R Mark III comparison with the Hasselblad 907X and that CFV 250C digital back. The first picture here on the left is with the A7R Mark III and the Helios 44-2. The one on the right is the Hasselblad 907X with that 45P f4. I've done my best across all of these to shoot at f8. Even though up here to the left, if you look up to the top left, you can't see the actual aperture of the Helios because that is of course a fully manual lens. So pay attention up here uh, at each of the respective pictures in the top left hand corner to see the exposure settings. All of these were shot at ISO or at least I attempted to shoot all of them at ISO 250. I think this is the one picture that I managed to shoot at ISO 200 but as you can tell I've tried to make this test as fair across the board as possible. First image Zooming in, again, Sony A7R on the left, and the Hasselblad on the right. Moving to our next photos, these are essentially the same subjects except that these are now in-camera JPEGs from their respective cameras. The one on the left, A7R Mark III JPEG, the one on the right, the 907X JPEG. Our next two are RAWs again, the one on the left, Sony A7R Mark III with the Helios 44-2, the one on the right, the Hasselblad 907X and the 45P. Again, both at F8. And our last two comparisons are going to be the same subject, my hand, but with the JPEGs. Sony A7R Mark III on the left with the Helios 44-2. Hasselblad 907X with that CFV 250C 50 megapixel digital back. A7R Mark III JPEG on the left, the full 42.4 megapixel if I'm not mistaken, and then 50 megapixels on the right for the Hasselblad. I 
Again, this was a very unique review to pull off and I'm having a hard time summing up my thoughts about the 907X series camera from Hasselblad. Again, it's very modular, so uh, it's difficult to know if I'm testing the lens, the back, or the camera itself. So I'm taking it, again, as a whole. Um, this setup, just under $8,000, guys, US. Do I think this is worth, this is what I ran into with the X1D series. Do I think it's worth the money uh, if you wanted to have such a unique shooting experience? Of course, the, dyna uh, the dynamic range, uh, 14 stops by the way, dyna uh, dynamic range. The resolution, the optics, all beautiful. The camera itself is beautiful. Uh, no, this is one of those times, no, I don't think this thing is worth $8,000 at least for me. If I was a V-System shooter, as in if I had older Hasselblads, uh, like the 500 series, um, those kind of old beautiful cameras with those old beautiful Zeiss optics, and I didn't want to shoot film, I think in a heartbeat, I would get the CFV-2 back to digitize that. That would almost be a no-brainer for me. I know some folks who have the original CFV back and they love that. This is even better, it has that beautiful, clean Hasselblad, good looks. I love how things are integrated inside of the back. And again, I love having the center covered. So yeah, the back itself, let me look at that, see how much that is. 12 minutes later. The thing is you can't, as far as I know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you can actually get the CFV2 back without the 907X front component. Um, and like I said, that's $6,399 as of the recording of this video. Uh, that may be, depending on the type of uh, photographer you are, that would be close to um, probably worth it, especially if you can find one of these used uh, to digitize your old Hasselblad camera, these systems. But uh, I'm just at a loss um, for one to actually enjoy the camera so much to understand the engineering and the precision that goes into making the camera so much and the performance. But at the same time thinking, you know, this is maybe not be a camera that I would personally uh, reach for to use, especially at the price point. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up the 907X review with the CFV 250C digital back. Crazy beautiful little camera. Very interesting. I would actually really like to know if any of you out there have used this. And I'd like to know your thoughts on it, see if I'm uh, by myself and my opinions. But anyway, you know where to put all that. Put them down there in the comments. Another thing, uh, check out the t-shirts. Yeah, I've just now launched that Teespring store, Camera Jockey Clothiers. It really helps everything out. I'm trying to move away from uh, doing even affiliate links, especially advertising on my videos. So I've got the Teespring store going. I thought about doing one of those Patreon pages or whatever. So yeah, check out the t-shirts. I even have fanny packs, all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, yeah. Until next time, guys, I am Adam Welch. Thanks a lot for being here. Well, you know, I can't end these videos.